Hi friends. Oftentimes we hear people say, if I just had one more conversation with my mom that passed, with my dad that passed, with my spouse that passed, what I wouldn't give to hug them one more time, that loved one that is missed so dearly. I feel that way myself, having lost some loved ones. Well, the followers of Jesus had that opportunity because after Jesus was raised from the dead, he appeared to the disciples and he gave them something of uh, marching orders of if they wanted to get the most out of following him, some ideas, some strong ideas as to what they could do. And I think it can also help us live better lives. I'll paraphrase a little bit this scripture from the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, where Jesus appeared to his friends. And Jesus asked them in this scripture, he said, do you love me? And they said, well, yeah, of course we love you. And then he said, feed my lambs. Feed those that need to be fed. Then he asked again, he said, do you love me? And the disciples said, yeah, you, you know that I do. I'm so excited. I get this chance to be with you when all hope was gone. And Jesus responded, take care of the sheep, shepherd them. And then Jesus asked a third time. And the disciple was a little upset and he says, yeah, I love you. Jesus said, feed the sheep. For Jesus, you see, it wasn't about him. He didn't say, bow down and kiss my ring or, or worship me or go get me something. Jesus said, take care of those that are hurting. We call that agape love, giving love. And Jesus was saying, you're going to need to go to do this. It's like your marching orders. And it's not like they're going to show up at the church doorstep at 1030 on Sunday morning or whatever time. Don't expect them to do that. You go if you love me. See, I'm all about love. Jesus is saying, Jesus didn't criticize, and he wasn't angry, he wasn't certainly nitpicking or controlling, he's just saying, go and be helpful. The why of the Christian message. Be there for one another. Engage in a positive way. There's a similar passage in the epistle of 1 Peter, then Jesus' instruction, and this is from 1 Peter 4, verses 7 and 11, and it says, everything in this world is about to be wrapped up, so don't take anything for granted. Stay awake in prayer, but most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. Be quick to give a meal to the hungry, a bed to the homeless, cheerfully. Be generous with the different things God gave you, passing them around so that all get in on it. Encores to Jesus, encores to the blessings of the other. 
be of God's hearty help. The correlation to Jesus' words is profound. Be quick to love one another as if your life depended on it. Be cheerful in helping out those that need a bed or a meal. And pass it around so that all gets in on it. We can't do that if we just do Jesus stuff on Sunday morning during worship. We have to get out to where the people are hurting. We have to offer things to those that are hurting. And particularly in this post-pandemic, post-COVID church that is coming out, it's going to be all about meeting people's needs not just the ones that are hungry and the ones that may need housing and we need to help them too but we need to help one another we need to provide a place of empathy and belonging and empowerment we need to be having the one-on-one -on -one communications we need to be going to people and saying we want to love the way Jesus wants us to love. It's so important because the church is never going to be the same again. But if we engage people where they are, if we tell them the difference that Jesus has made in our lives, and it doesn't have to be about an hour in a sanctuary and entertaining people. It's about empathy and caring and belonging and empowerment. The church is transformed into a different place. Hear these words which I've shared before from Reverend Jasmine Smothers and friends that wrote a book about the 22nd century church. Imagine the very identity of the church once again becoming a place of empathy that connects people to resources while meeting immediate physical and deep spiritual needs. Imagine the church as a place where people find belonging and empowerment. This exciting future requires that we embrace seven essential and different mindsets. So we give of our time and our minds and our gifts and we feel differently and we feel better and we are illuminated but we can't do that in the sanctuary in an hour a week. We have to do things differently so that people feel a place of empathy and belonging and empowerment. First, we need to see things differently. We need to try new things. Realize that some of them won't work and that failure is okay. But because we want to reach out and create a sense of community, we're willing to be innovative and we're willing to talk about it. Holy smokes, friends, if you're not willing to go to someone else and tell them the difference Jesus has made in your life and the difference that church is, we're not going to get anywhere. You gotta, this has got to feel good. There has to be a relentless feeling of empathy and belonging and practicing of the work of empowerment and seven and imagine and hope and act. If we don't feel it, they're not just gonna show up for that hour of worship. But if we tell them that, then it will be a place of difference. My friends here at Pine Grove has developed actually a, where I, I'm a pastor, a six-month plan. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to create some energy. We're going to walk away from those that have negative energy and are always trying to just nitpick and shoot ideas down because it's love that guides us. Like we read in that scripture today, we're going to love as if our life depended on it. We're not going to nitpick our way and cut down ideas and look for the charts and flow charts to do things. We're going to love our way through. 
We're going to continue our food pantry 24-7 in our clothing shed where we offer free clothes to go. We're going to reach out with chicken barbecues to increase our mission and ministry. And we're going to offer prayers and communion at these chicken barbecues. We're going to do drive-in outside worship. We're going to celebrate with love the things that we do and have small groups together and feel good about the things we're doing. Increase our presence online where we can have dedicated worship and live streaming because it's all about bringing people into a place of empathy, belonging, and empowerment. And hear this quote, because it's about passion that drives people crazy and passion that has people do extraordinary things. Not nitpicking and tearing ideas apart, but a loving passion and a celebration of, yeah, I want part of that. I'll close with a quote from someone that developed and heard that here at Pine Grove when her dad was sick. It's from Kate Kay, and this is what Kate wrote. It's a little bit about the pastor, about me, but really it's not about me. It's about following Jesus in creating a place of empathy, belonging, and empowerment. This is what Kate wrote. She says, I'm not an organized religion person. Thus, my shout out to Pine Grove Methodist Church should give more credence than the regular shout out. It's the church, she says her dad, Alec, and her dad's partner, Debbie, attend and been going to from some time. And she shares that when her dad was in the hospital, we were there for him. We prayed with him. I friended Kate on Facebook and we offered all manner of help and visited dad in the hospital. And she continues, church leaders and members who preach about kindness and then leave as soon as the service is over, they don't get it. They're a dime a dozen. But churches like Pine Grove who walk the walk, who are community minded, who provide caring gestures towards people with expecting nothing in return, they're the place to be. So she says, if you're looking for a place of empathy, belonging and empowerment, a sense of community, then she says, Pine Grove is the place to check out. She says, I'm not even a member of that church, yet they had my back. But you see, it's not about me. And it's not about an individual member of the church. It's about Jesus saying to us, do you love me? Al, do you love me? Do members of your church love me? Then shepherd, take care of the sheep. Feed the sheep. Feed the lambs. Follow. Get out of that church and do something to make the world a better place. And do it cheerfully. Do love to one another as if your life depended on it. Passing the love around so that all get in on it. Be a place of empathy, belonging, and empowerment. Come and join and feel good. It's all about Christ. It's all about the risen Christ by the sea and what he gave for us. Come, feel place of empathy, belonging, and empowerment at Pine Grove or a church near you that follows the risen Christ. Amen, amen, and amen.